Hello everyone, it is Hacks for Forever, and today we're going to be looking at Process Explorer. Process Explorer is a professional edition of Task Manager. Basically, it's a free program that you can download from Sysinternals. It's part of the Sysinternals pack. You can download that from technet at microsoft.com. Uh, basically, this program allows you to look at uh, the currently loaded DLLs by programs. You can see all of the list of programs like the Windows Task Manager can. You can see what files the program is accessing. You can see um, virus total uh, signature ratings of that particular program. So you can see if it's malware, you can see if it's spyware. Um, you can see the digital signature list of the programs. You can see memory usage, uh, hard drives access statistics. You can see all kinds of information from Process Explorer. It's basically a Windows Task Manager on some major steroids. I'm going to go ahead and show you the program. I already have it downloaded here on the desktop. So let me go ahead and close up Chrome here. Let's get uh, the desktop going up here. Here we go. Okay, so let's open up Process Explorer here. We'll take a look at the interface. So Process Explorer is quite um, complicated looking when you first open it. Uh, trust me, it's not too complicated. Now uh, you'll see here um, I have a verified signer and virus total um, tabs here. You can enable these tabs by going to uh, view and then you can do select columns. You can go to check verified signer and check virus total. Now to actually activate it because it'll just be blank when you first load the tabs in. You have to go to Options, and then you can check Verify Image Signatures, and then go to VirusTotal.com and check VirusTotal.com. That'll load these how I have it. So you just simply check these, and then basically they will uh, show up. They'll load all the information, and uh, it pulls the information from the Internet. So if the computer is, no, is not connected to the Internet at the moment, you won't be able to access the VirusTotal and Verified Signer information, but it's really useful if you're trying to find malware. Malware is really interesting. I'm going to demonstrate that for you now. Basically, I have a copy of malware here. Basically, this is a banking trojan. It's currently detected. However, there are newer um, banking trojans that aren't detected nowadays. I went ahead and ran it, and we have it in memory here. And you can see that there's no digital signature. This is really common with malware. And the virus total, uh, you can see that it's 48 out of 55. Now, the thing about banking trojans and some of the newer malware samples is that when they're zero day, when, they're, when they first come out, no one really knows about them. Like, it's really difficult to actually find malware nowadays. And when malware d is found, it's usually not detected at the, at the start. So that's why antivirus companies are actually starting to go over to more of a behavioral blocking system rather than a, uh, a signature-based system like they have been traditionally using. Signatures only can only can identify threats that have already been like found. The signatures have been entered into a database. Behavioral blocking can actively deny access to certain files on the computer that are protected. You can deny access to certain kinds of executables. You can deny the ability to inject code into other programs. There's just all these different things that behavior blockers can do so much better than actual traditional signature-based checking of executables. Basically, uh, signature checking will never probably go away. It's still a really effective method of getting rid of malware, but it is becoming more and more obsolete as time goes on. So let's go ahead and show you some of the features that Process Explorer has. Head and go into the options menu, and you can replace the Windows Task Manager with this program. So instead of using the Windows Task Manager, you could use this as your task manager. It makes it really nice because this has a lot more features. This program is really awesome when it comes to actually finding information about programs and being able to find malware, you can see um, connection information if I had that function enabled. Um, you c it is possible, but I don't have a particular DLL requires for that yet. I have to install that DLL to the uh, virtual machine. Anyway, um, so now I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate some functions of uh, Process Explorer for removing malware. So basically, um, this program is packed. It's basically inside of an encrypted box that uh, the anti-malware can't read the inside contents of the program. That's why they try to do it, to try to fool scanners. But it, it honestly has just become less productive, and it's actually made the program more detectable. Um, if you know what you're doing, you can find malware pretty easily on your system. Um, usually, if, 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 it, if it's a packed executable and it doesn't have any description, as you can see here, this program doesn't have any description and it doesn't have any company name, and it has no digital signature, and it's detected. Pretty common for uh, VirusTotal to pick up on this stuff pretty quick. So it's always worth a shot to have uh, VirusTotal active uh, in the uh, Process Explorer tabs, because then that way you can get that uh, extra data from the, uh, from the service. Anyway, um, so basically, let me show you what you can do if there is two malware programs running at the same time. 
So for this video, I'm not going to be using malware bytes to remove this malware. So basically, um, let's just say in a scenario where the malware is running and you see it like this. And let's say it has a detection ratio, but every time you kill it, it respawns. So let's say that I'm going to kill this program, kill process, and then let's say it comes back. I'm going to run it again to demonstrate it, but it would be the same principle. The program would just run again. Well, that's because one of the other programs that are currently running on your system is also part of the malware. Let's go ahead and say that uh, this, this Java update schedule is part of this program. I know it's a legitimate program, but we're going to use it for an example here. So let's say that this was a fake Java updater. Basically, we'll go ahead and uh, what we'd want to do first is we'd want to suspend both the processes. So we'll right click, click suspend on both of the processes. This is after you can identify it. Chances are, if something says like, um, this is executable name, but it's, and it says Java and it looks legitimate and it has this icon and stuff, but if it doesn't have a valid digital signature like this one does, chances are it's going to be malware. It'll also have a detection ratio of 9 times out of 10, but some cases the newer versions of malware might not. Your mileage may vary in this situation. It, it depends on the, uh, the actual threat that you're encountering. Anyway, when you suspend the processes, they won't be able to revive themselves. They're basically put into a hibernation state. They're just, they're just put into a nice, careful sleep. So now you can just go ahead and just do this. Just kill them. Just go ahead and kill both of them. And then, now the program won't come back. Technically secure, but however, when you restart your computer, the program would probably come back. So what you'd want to do is you could probably um, try waiting until a database update for your antivirus, or whatever your antivirus you use. So I hope this has been a really informational video about Process Explorer. Uh, I'll also try to make some more videos about the System Terminals uh, pack. There's a lot of interesting and amazing tools that are inside this pack. You can get it from free from Microsoft TechNet. I'll leave a link in the description for the pack, and I'll also leave an individual link for Process Explorer. This has been Hacks for Forever. I want to thank you all for watching. Please be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.